All right, we have the last fireside chat that's going to happen uh, before lunchtime. And you want to check this thing out. We're going to do a little deep dive with Steve Locke from The Economist. Uh, we've already had a really, really enthralling conversation, so I'm really excited to share it with you. And uh, yeah, without further ado, Steve, come on out. Ooh, I like this. Hello again, guys. Thank you. Oh, a slow jam you came out to. No, it felt good. It actually it felt kind of like I was Got getting the vibe to the just right. Yeah. Just two chairs, <laughs> just hanging out. I'm, I, we made we need the ferns though. Yeah. Right here. I'm, I'm just pretending there's and a I fire just here. Be belligerent with you the entire time. Yeah, exactly. Um, well, Steve, thanks for uh, spending some time with me. I really wanted to be able to dive in a little bit more into what's going on in this world of of marketing and trust and consumer behavior. But before we jump into all that stuff, um, can you tell us just a little bit about your background uh, so we can get your point um, of view and, and also maybe tell us about what's going on at the organization right now at The Economist? Sure. And, oh my god. Um, <laughs> so uh, I guess the short version is I'm, I'm sort of not exactly sure where I'm here sometimes. Um, you know, I've got a degree in biology and, the, and jazz history. You know, and I'm somehow running mar marketing technology for the Economist globally, and no idea how I found myself here. But um, it was uh, this kind of uh, you know, quest for knowledge kind of thing. You know, that's always driven me to to I think where I am now. Um, I've got this. I've got, you know, my sorry. One of my favorite stories is actually with um, uh, when I was around five years old. My mom was really con she was really concerned because she took me to an amusement park for the first time. And she threw me on that, you know, that, that one ride that just goes around for kids and around and goes around. It's and called a merry-go-round, yeah. To, thanks, thanks. Yeah, I yeah, just, yeah. Uh, I'm not from here, so. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, the, um, <laughs> I got off the ride and, she's, and she was like, well, what happened? You just, you, you, you look like you didn't enjoy it at all, you know? And I'm like, no, that was the best thing in my entire life, you know? She's like, but you weren't smiling, you know? And I was like, well, because I was staring at the central mechanism for how it actually works, and that was all I was doing, trying to figure out like how these counter-turning, you know, kinds of things were, were, were going on. Um, I think that like I've always been interested in um, how how systems work, how you build systems, how things are dependent on each other. Um, the panel that was just up here was, you know, the, 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 around the tech that drives us all, you know, together. Um, and now I find myself in this place where. You know, career-wise, went uh, you know developing websites, went to programming and uh, HTML for dummies. Yeah, pretty much. Yep, I yeah, that. Uh, was a Perl developer for 16 years. Um, wow. And then uh, realized that I liked working with people, um, and uh, ended up uh, bringing um, agile and Scrum into software development, um, uh, into different uh, industries, and then ended up in publishing, ended up in The Economist. It was the first, my first life at The Economist was actually, uh, I was brought in by the CTO, who like you has a musical background, um, to reform the software development practices at the time, you know, to switch everything from waterfall and ad hoc into uh, something that was, uh, you know, structured uh, agile framework. Um, I ended up where I am now from a conversation about uh, with, my, with my current manager now, who's the CMO, um, about missing dim sum and basically talking about Star Trek for two hours. <laughs> and I had no idea who he was, and he had no idea that I, that I had actually just quit. Yep. Um, and I gave, you know, I gave two months of notice, and, 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 and uh, one thing sort of led to another, and I... I got this job after uh, talking to people about how digital marketing needed to transform and wasn't being done the right way. Says something about human relationships involved here. Yeah, it really does, actually. Tell us about what's going on with all the, what, what the teams look like and the human relationships in the organization now. So, uh, we're, we're just gone, we've just gone through a reorg, um, probably about two months old or, or something like that. So a lot of us are trying to figure out exactly what the new world is like. But um, that really came from um, a, 
a, a record of success, I would say, in digital transformation that was happening inside of digital acquisition, uh, where, I was, where I was running uh, MarTech at first. And it was a very small team. It was just two, uh, three, three people. Grew, it kept growing um, because we kept, um, we actually we kept doubling subscription revenue every year. And so when we started this kind of journey and we were doing nothing inside of digital uh, marketing really, I think one of the worst things that, uh, that made me crazy was that in 2013, uh, when, I, when I started to, to look at this kind of stuff, the P&L actually had all the offline channels split out with, is with regions and what you're doing and trifold and bifold and everything. That, and the last line was called external internet. <laughs> <laughs> and literally everything that was anything digital was just shoved in there. You know, we've come a long way since then. Um, but that's really just really to illustrate what's happened in terms of the, the transformation. So we, we built the team around really bringing that out and being sort of technology, media, content journey first. Everyone at the table at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and, you know, there was a lot of success, you know, out of that. And, and the reorg has now... Uh, been an attempt to take that kind of transformative success and particularly, I think, advance, advancement and application of technology and data to spread it outside of just the, uh, the circulation or subscription marketing organization. We talked a little bit about this concept that you've coined, uh, engineering trust. Right. And... Um, what it means for your organization, what it means for other organizations. And, you know, as you guys have gone through this, this reorg, as you think about what, is, what does it mean? What, is, what does it mean for The Economist to try to engineer trust with the consumer? You know, it's, it's one of those things where, um, you know, when you use the word engineering with trust, it sounds kind of yucky and it feels, it can feel kind of like, kind of gross, like, you know, you're, 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 you're taking something that's supposed to be natural and, 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 and making it, you know, into a thing that you can to make, you know, in some way. And, but it's meant to be provocative in that sense because there are bad actors out there who have been engineering trust for a long time. You know, we, you know, we, can, we can talk about Facebook and Cambridge Analytica and kind of leave it there, you know, because I think everybody in the room probably understands exactly more of the nuance of what goes into it and what was going on. So there have already been folks who continually uh, leverage the kind of tools that we have today, uh, tools, technology, uh, people, lack of knowledge and lack of tools, you know, you know going all the way down to... To, to engineer what is a qualitative kind of, you know, thing, you know, that can be very sort of amorphous or, or, or nebulous, mm -hmm. and to figure out how to, how, to, how to sort of like science it, right, mm -hmm. or data science it, or machine learning it, you know, or AI it. Um, and, and they've really had success, you know, because we look at, you know, I think politics are really easy, a really easy thing to point to, and... Um, to see the, the efficacy of that kind of thing. So, so, so utilizing the, the kind of word engineering with trust instead of saying like uh, generating trust or earning trust, you know, which is, I think more, more wholesome, you know, but they're not challenging terms, is an attempt, I think, for, at least for me, when I, when I speak to people, to have a bit of a call to arms for those of us who understand the tech who understand the commercial side of things, how these things interact, how they can be extremely powerful when used together in the right way and the wrong way. Well, in the world of tech, you have to engineer, you have to yeah. build, and you have to have some kind of context to which you are building. And it means that as you dive into these concepts of this, this experience the customer's gonna have, where the data's gonna flow, you ask yourself the question, is this going to generate trust? Yeah. You know, we, you know, we're, we're obviously in a, in a mobile conference, and we, and why mobile is like such an important part, you know, of this, of this whole concept and this whole conversation is that we have ascribed a level of trust to these devices that we keep literally on our bodies pretty much 24-7. I don't know about you, but I pretty much like, you know, I sleep on my phone because I end up losing it because it's fallen, I fell asleep and it fell out of my hand. And as soon as I wake up, I'm like, where's my phone? Um, 
And we surround ourselves with you know, lots of other things, but we've got this device that somehow we have allowed to enter into our trusted circle. And it can, you know, it, it can be you know, used as a device that, that we leverage for the, for the information we want, but it's absolutely tracking us, right? This is why we're kind of here, right? Mm -hmm. we're, we're, a lot of us come from brands where we rely on this kind of tracking that exists. So bringing in you know, the, the Economist and kind of what the brand stands for and the values that are there, we talk a lot about you know, values-based based marketing you know, these days and aligning brand value to consumers. Um, there's, there's, there's kind of a duty you know, that's, that's there to, to take a privileged position, I think, in, uh, in, in the ecosystems that we're in. And especially now today with uh, you know, the, the difficulty, let's say, of trusting news sources, um, you know, on, regardless of you know, where you are, really, I think, requires those of us who have an idea and a clue about the way that these things work to ask questions and ask questions of others. Mm -hmm. And so when we have this kind of, uh, when we're in this arena where we've ascribed this level of trust to this mobile device that sits with us, you know, we have to kind of ask ourselves, like, you know, with this kind of power you know, that we have, what are the right things to do? <clears throat> yeah, I love the way this brings the human element to it all day because you can say I'm going to engineer trust, but if you're not thinking, if you're not bringing ethics to the table, mm -hmm. you're not bringing a concept of culture to the table, yeah. um, and this human first-person perspective, then you're just you're just building a workflow that automates towards some kind of metric, and maybe yeah. there is a, a trust metric or something that you can create, but there's this weird fine line between what is, what is uh, discernible by the end user as you trying to manipulate them and get their trust. <laughs> yeah. It's not quite the real it's thing. It's like what you were saying earlier in, in your yeah. keynote, and you're like, you know, I'm, I'm gonna tell you exactly how I got you over here, you know, to this point. <laughs> Nobody really wants to know that, you know? <laughs> yeah. Who wants to be actually walked up to in a room and be like, I know exactly who you are, I know who you're married to, I know how many kids you have, I know what you were watching you know, three minutes ago, and I know that you're not paying attention. When I was young in this industry, I applied for a job, and I thought it would be cool to create a dossier on every person that I was interviewing with. <laughs> so, and I, I searched everything on the internet I could find, all their yeah. favorite books, and like all these things, and man, I was creepy. <laughs> It did not work out. You know, it's, <laughs> it's uh, you know, this, this, the, the concept in robotics with the uncanny valley. Mm -hmm. um, there's this, you know, I utilize this as if, if you guys aren't familiar. Um, it's just, it's just, you know, very simply that that concept in robotics, where you know, the, the closer and closer you get, you know, towards a, an actual representation of a human being, there's this, there's this area where it gets like cooler or cuter, and you know, kind of like, hey, that's really cool, and it starts to get more and more like us, but not quite, and it dips into this area where it's creepy as hell, and <laughs> you know, I think, and I use that just as a, as a, as a point of. Uh, uh, talking about like the, sort of the world that we're in with advertising and marketing, we keep running towards this concept of um, maybe unattainable perfection in our targeting. And it's kind of to your point where you're, you're also talking about this people-based marketing, you know, kind of, kind of piece also. It's like, okay, well, if you've got all this data on, on every single person, what you do with it Right, and again, where that's where that piece is. Like, am I doing the right thing here? Um, should I actually leverage everything that I've got, you know, against someone? Um, because if we don't do it right, it can be super creepy. And perfection is not actually a measure of trust, you know. And and the sort of the reach or the, you know, if we assume that you can't actually be perfect in, in terms of targeting then that kind of journey towards that just creeps people out. Because I think what we're trying to get to is actually relevancy. Mm -hmm. And very much of what we do, and, 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 and some of what I was talking about earlier, about looking at some of these derived metrics, you know, where we're trying to see if a piece of content is relevant to a person. We're trying to see if a particular feature is relevant. 
you know, and that goes all the way down to whether a, a scroll wheel, you know, or a bar is on the left or the right, you know, and, and these are the things that I think are much more around, um, if we can get to this place where we take a qualitative thing and make it quantitative and build a kind of a measure or score around trust, um, we'll get, to, you know, closer towards a lot more of the conversation today, which is about customer experience and, and, and trying to measure customer experience in some way that's a little bit more holistic looking at things. Um, I love to think about this as like, if I were looking at, looking at that score on a chart and seeing the trust score sort of rise and fall along with my conversion rates and yeah, yeah. You know, other kinds of engagement metrics and that sort of thing, like how many false positives might exist where someone actually they were like, well, fine, I guess they got me, so I'm gonna buy this thing, but I'm gonna remember this. <laughs> and, and I don't like how they were so creepy on me, yeah. and I, you know, I'm gonna give in this time, yeah. <laughs> but I'm gonna note this in the back of my head, and if I see this behavior more, I might do something you know, more drastic. Yeah, how often do you think that could occur? Do you think there are these false positive situations I where think we they, think, oh man, this engagement is, get, is great, yeah. but the consumer is actually saying, they're riding a line here that yeah. I'm not totally great with. Yeah, I mean, what is the real value of, <clears throat> of getting somebody to begrudgingly accept something <laughs> in general, especially from a transactional point of view where we're trying to get somebody to, pe uh, uh, to, to, to pay for something, you know, whatever it is. We, we have to think about, when we think about the concept of value exchange, if we, we kind of come up a level or two and, and think about it more holistically, and who you are as a brand and what you offer in terms of your products or your services or who you are and what you're actually selling. You're selling the value of, 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 of who you are and that really kind of goes down to how somebody's gonna trust you over time. You know, one of the, the philosophical you know, difference, uh, uh, differences, you know, battles, et cetera, what you wanna call it, we'll call it a conversation internally that's happening is, you know, the, we can, go ahead and throw offers at people a thousand times a day. And we could throw content at people a, th a thousand times a day. But is that really what we should be doing, right? Um, because if, we're, if we haven't actually built in some kind of way to listen to how um, this really affects the people that we're trying to get to, to do a thing for us that we're trying to influence in a certain way and get them to move somewhere, if we, you know, if we actually build something to, to, to listen back and understand the real meaning of a thing outside of just a transaction, like, like you know, to your point, who cares if somebody bought, you know, a copy of The Economist, you know, if, if they were just like, fine, stop calling me. Just stop calling me, you know. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of salespeople would say that's okay. Right, but. <laughs> exactly. But now we're, yeah. when we're looking at the concept of retention, what's retention? Retention right. is really loyalty. What is loyalty? Loyalty is trust, right? Trust is relevancy. Um, I'd rather, you know, I'm more in a, of a camp now where I'd say, you know, give people a little bit more free stuff, you know, like listen to them and where their signals are as to when they're ready to do something. And it's, it's kind of like the, the very first click through advertising ad on the internet. Have you ever seen that? Where it, it literally says, um, Have you ever clicked here? And it has a little space to click. <laughs> <laughs> <Basically>. <laughs> Got a lot of the desired behavior, yeah. But how do people feel, right, on the other side? We, you know, we um, we had a similar ad that we put out that was our, our most clicked, you know, ad, and we, we did a, a premium buy, you know, on on certain sites, where um, we basically bought everything around the site, um, and it was just a bunch of cameras, and the cameras are like moving, you know, and it just, <laughs> it, you know, it's like how do you know feel about being spied on, you know, kind of thing. Oh my, like, everybody clicked on, everybody clicked on it, but, but really, you know, that, that was that exactly the the right execution, right, for the Economist, where yes, we want to talk about that, and yes, we link to a, a, a an interesting article, where um, we are talking about the technology that exists today and how you're being tracked and, 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 and spied upon, quote unquote. Um, but um, it, does that really you know, align with the kind of value that you're trying to mm -hmm. express out there? Let's talk a little bit about how you and how folks at The Economist think about partnerships because obviously you're trying to build up this trust with the consumer on your property, yep. but 
you know, your advertising and the experience of the economist also happens on partner sites sure. in partner networks. Um, how do you think about keeping that trust all the way through in, in those scenarios? I think that that's actually one of the most, absolutely the most difficult things. And, you know, we, we have the benefit and the, the, the unfortunate uh, uh, place of being in this situation now where we've got endless amounts of MarTech, ad tech, 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 you know, partners and vendors who are developed well enough now, you know, they, they sort of all overlap 50% at least anyway, you know. And it's not to say that they don't have great tech, but are they a company that you want to align yourselves with? Because when you're thinking about partnerships and whether it's a, an affiliate partnership or whether it's a, a tech stack partnership, you know, thinking about who is behind the scenes, you know, in, in, the, in, in the folks that we're working with. Because you've got to trust that the, 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 the folks who are going to, to have your brand, your name, you know, attached to them in some way, as soon as you, you know, leave you know, sort of each other's proximity, right? They're going to they're gonna be talking about you or working with you as a name or a brand, however they are going to, to, to feel like they want to do it. How are they going to treat that? Yeah. yeah. And so I know that when I, when, I, when I look for partners these days, I insist on talking to the CEO. I insist on talking to the CTO. And I insist on just having a conversation. Mm -hmm. you know? And I ask about what are your cultural values? Why did you start this company? That's you awesome. Know? And, and because it, none of this stuff is actually um, outside of the fact that we're all, you know, doing what we're doing to, to, to have a life and make a business and be successful, right? <clears throat> These are not incompatible, mutually exclusive kind of things. But there are ways to do this well and right. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that we all have a, a, a duty, you know, to... To, to, to promote good actors, right, mm -hmm. and, and, and to combat the bad ones, because the bad ones are just going, they are going, they do not have the same <laughs> kinds of, you know, personal mores or, 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 you know, things that they're really kind of judging themselves by, they're just going. And do you really want to be partnered with them? Are they going to leave you in the dust? Do they just want to move ahead with you because they want your brand attached to them somehow? These right. are hard decisions to make because oh, yeah, really uh, sometimes you, you see the short-term gain, right? And you see like some immediate scale it might fit or whatever. And making a long-term decision when you see maybe competition, yeah. making the short-term decision, yeah. it's, a, it's a tough thing that we compete with in our world in general. Yeah. Um, looking at the shortcuts, weighing the risks, understanding the long-term. It's very humanistic, right, to, to go after those things. Yeah, whether you're in the tech world or the media world or the advertising world, no one wants to wait, right? No one wants, <laughs> to, forbid, wait. Right? No one wants to wait for success, yeah. right? I, I, I think there's, um, there, there's at least an element that I, that I believe myself that I can influence, which is that um, th there is a knowledge gap with a lot of folks who have been in, in some ways sort of sideswiped, you know, in industries that have been disrupted by technology. Mm -hmm. And they don't have the, they don't have the vocabulary, they don't have the skill set, they don't have the knowledge, and there's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. But there are, you know, there are players who prey on you know, that kind of fact and say, I'm just gonna sell you a thing uh, because, you know, you need it. Don't you, don't you need it? Mm -hmm. D don't, you know, hasn't somebody else, you know, said that you, you should be doing this? Right. Um, there's another way to do that, I think, right? And, and internally, you know, wherever I am, you know, it, you know with economists, I, I work on disseminating information around why a particular platform is important, what it's doing, what it's not doing. Um, you know, u utilizing the vocabulary of the people that I'm talking to and, and try not to, you know, over, overwhelm with tech lingo, which is not really helpful for anyone. Um, and I think for those of us who have that, um, position or knowledge or whatever it is that's gotten us into that place where we, we are hybrid roles and we, we bridge, you know, different areas together. Um, it's really important to, to, to communicate that um, what you're doing and, and, and why you're doing something is relevant to them, applicable to them. And that takes a level of humility, I think, because you can't possibly know everything that goes on in the business. And the business person, you know, cannot possibly know what goes, goes on in every part of technology. That's right. And, you know. 
So to tie a bow on this uh, sort of engineering trust, <clears throat> for all of us here, what's the, like, what's the first step to start working toward that in our organizations if we're gonna think about um, how that works across our teams and in product and you know, like designing a, a direction toward engineering trust. What's, what do you think's the first, the first piece? <laughs> you know, I think my, my, my answer is gonna be a sort of a little philosophical, um, but, but I think still relevant. And it, it kind of it, it links to my background and the fact that I've jumped around in, in industries and, um, and in many, many ways and in many situations, I feel like I walk into a room and I feel like an imposter because I'm like, why, why am I actually here? We're all why imposters. I, We're all you know. imposters, yeah. Um, but I definitely wouldn't have gotten to where I am now to be in a position to be able to influence this stuff if I didn't start challenging the people around me. Challenge yourself, challenge your team, challenge your, your manager, challenge the organization. And, you know, we're, I'm talking about these things in, like, in small ways. If you feel like, um, you know, let's talk about like, you know, metrics and say, I don't feel that ins installs are the thing that we should be focusing on. Then use that. If you really believe in it, take that, and then also have another solution and say, this is the thing that we should be looking at. Or the market is going this way, and these are capabilities that exist. Um, and then maybe that's, you know, it, it goes all the way to the side of, you know, I don't think we should be running this campaign. Mm -hmm. That certainly happened at The Economist before, you know, where we, um, throw lots of ideas around, and we like to think that, in, uh, particularly in the marketing side, that we have this kind of provocative, uh, you know, uh, appeal. Uh, yeah, provocative appeal. The messaging's a little, you know, making you think kind of things, a little cheeky. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but sometimes that stuff goes over the line a, a bit. I actually had a lyric that got cut from the song that was decided it was too cheeky. <laughs> yeah, <this is> exactly. <laughs> Maybe the you'll cheeky. get it out of me at happy hour, but yeah. <laughs> um, Everything comes out with the number of drinks, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. how you build trust. My team was like, that's, that's actually how you build They're like, it is cheeky, but is it right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, we, you know, it's just about um, like own, own your space, right? Own your space, own your knowledge, and, and, and be able to stand up and say, you know what? I may not know everything, but I do know that this is not right, mm -hmm. or we could do something better. And this, you know we're not thinking about something the right way, and then you can start there. I think that's a good place to start. Um, so you've seen post back for a few hours now today. Yes. Um, I'd like to know what you hope to get out of the next day and a half. What What do you want to get out of post back? I will be really honest, um, because I was totally lying to you before. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's how you build trust, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> uh, um, with this reorg that's happened, right, um, presumably my, my remit now is looking at over marketing technology as a capability across all you know, revenue and business lines. And uh, my strongest area is definitely not mobile. It's absolutely not mobile. I, I think I know a thing, um, and I, I do know some stuff, but... Um, I came here to learn. I came here to learn from the, the best of you know, minds. You know? So I've been sitting and, and listening to the panels and being actually interested in really you know, what's going on. I am totally just absorbing. Um, there's, you know, we should never stop. You know, we should never actually stop learning, especially fighting our own level of, I, maybe I don't want to sit through this. I already know this, you know, this kind of stuff. I mean, if you, that's already a loss right there, you know, if you've already tuned out. So for the next you know, day and a half for me, it's about keeping myself tuned in. And uh, I, that was totally an unexpected pun. But <laughs> I'm it's all about being really contextual. I yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, but, but I am you know, really here to, to kind of listen to, to the, the wisdom and knowledge that exists and experiences that people have. That's great. I'm in the same boat. Um, Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Steve, for spending some extra time diving really deep into yeah, this. No worries. This Thanks is an me. inspiring conversation for me, and I hope it was for everyone. Big round of applause for Steve. Thanks. Thanks.